Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen showing a slice of the lung with the upper lobe and the lower lobe. We are looking at the cut surface and turning this specimen around, we can see the visceral pleura and here is the hilum of the lung. The diagnosis here is abscess of the lung and we're looking at a cavity. But uh, before we zoom into the cavity, we can also see some other areas of discoloration and also the lung parenchyma looks more solid rather than spongy. So these are areas of consolidation or inflammation in the lung and this is secondary to infection. Over here, we have a cavity. This cavity contains yellowish purulent material in the fresh specimen, it would appear as thick, yellowish or greenish pus or fluid. And this is really made up of neutrophils as well as necrotic cellular debris. Let's have a brief overview showing the labels so we can see some consolidation and we can see the abscess cavity here with separative inflammation and liquefactive necrosis. I'm going to show another example where there are more than one abscess in the lung. Here is another example with one area of discoloration here, another one here, and a few other smaller spots. This abscess looks more solid with this whole area of necrotic tissue and separative inflammation. On radiology, usually abscesses will appear as irregular cavities as well, and they can quite closely resemble cavitating carcinoma or cavitating malignancy. These specimens are taken from our virtual pathology museum and this is from our online pathology resource path web. You can register for free using the link in the video and access our entire virtual pathology museum. Let's take a look at some of the clinical pathologic features of abscess of the lung. An abscess is essentially a localized area of suppurative inflammation, and suppurative inflammation is pus. So this is composed of acute inflammatory cells, in other words, neutrophils, and necrotic material. Usually, abscesses are due to bacterial infection, and some common causative organisms include Staphylococcus aureus, Streptococcus pneumoniae, etc. And one of the predisposing conditions would be aspiration of food, for example, in patients with a poor cough reflex, in alcohol intoxication, or patients with seizures, or patients who have difficulty swallowing, perhaps due to a previous stroke, or obstruction of the esophagus. This can also complicate pneumonia and other infectious conditions such as bronchiectasis. If there are conditions where there are foci of infection elsewhere, for example, in infective endocarditis or bacterial endocarditis, the heart valves have vegetations on the valves which contain fibrin as well as bacterial organisms. These can actually embolize into the lung, giving rise to localized foci of infection and therefore separative inflammation. Anything that gives rise to obstruction of the airways, for example, a tumor, can also give rise potentially to abscess formation. And also, abscess can extend directly from adjacent organs or even from the environment. For example, if there is a road traffic accident or there is a penetrating trauma whereby the lung is exposed to the environment, or if an adjacent organ such as the esophagus has a focus of infection, this can also extend to the lung parenchyma. Clinically, usually the patients will experience high fever. There may also be other systemic symptoms like loss of appetite and loss of weight. There is often a productive cough, particularly if the abscess cavity is in continuity with the airways, and there may be purulent sputum or bloodstained sputum, and also the patient may experience chest pain. Grossly, abscesses can be single or multiple, as we have seen, Usually in the context of septic emboli or in post-pneumonic abscesses, they can be multiple. And also if these are related to aspiration, pneumonia or aspiration of food, they more often occur on the right side of the lung because the right main bronchus anatomically is just more vertical. And what we would see, and this is a fresh example of one of the cases I showed you earlier, 
this very irregular cavity containing yellowish or greenish yellow purulent liquefied material. In chronic abscesses, the wall around the abscess can be somewhat fibrotic, thick and whitish. Microscopically, we can see a localized area of separative inflammation within the cavity and this separative inflammation is composed of neutrophils, numerous neutrophils, this kind of shadowy outlines of necrotic cells, and sometimes even the causative bacterial organisms. In the rim or at the periphery of the abscess, there may be some fibroblastic proliferation of spindle cells or granulation tissue, little small blood vessels, and eventually this can be replaced by fibrosis. So in summary, this is an example of an abscess of the lung. What we can see is an irregular cavity containing yellowish purulent material, and this is usually due to bacterial infection. Thank you.